Hey guys, this is John from Walton's, and I'm here with Pheasants Forever and Chef John Whipfleet, author of the Venison Cookbook, From Slay to Gourmet. We're gonna be going over some fairly easy upland bird recipes that if you can make anything like him, you're gonna impress all your guests. Hey guys, we're back with another episode of Path to the Uplands. We've got John Whipley from Animales Barbecue, and today we're gonna try some Nashville hot seasoned quail. Yeah, we're pretty excited for this. Uh, we're, we're basically gonna take this quail and break it down into quarters, okay. and then kind of treat it like chicken wings. Uh, traditional Nashville hot chicken is breaded. We're gonna forego that and just use the seasoning from Walton's. It's a pretty spicy seasoning. Uh, it has great flavor. We're going to season these, uh, sear the, the quarters in oil, and then serve it with a red cabbage and cilantro creamy coleslaw. So that sounds delicious. What's the first step we need to do? So the first thing we're going to do before we do anything is uh, we're going to season our cabbage. So we're going to season it with some salt and some sugar, and that's basically going to draw out some of the moisture from the cabbage, but also at the same time add flavoring into the cabbage. So that'll, that'll sit for about 30 minutes. Okay. And while that's sitting, we're gonna start breaking down our quail into quarters. So a little bit of prep work with the cabbage and then we start on the quail. That's exactly right. All right, let's get to the prep work. For somebody to make this at home, what are the ingredients? What do they need? Yeah, so uh, they're gonna need some quail, that's obvious. Uh, and then for the coleslaw, you just need a red or green cabbage uh, and that's cut fairly thin. We're gonna add a mayonnaise and sour cream mixture to that after it's seasoned with salt and pepper and uh, sugar. And then right at the end, we're gonna add some green onions and cilantro that's just kind of roughly ripped and chopped. So it's kind of, it's got big stems to it uh, and it's a, it's a beautiful coleslaw. Now for somebody who doesn't like cilantro, those poor unfortunate people yeah. who it tastes like death to, what could they use to substitute? Or they can just take it right out. You okay. don't have to worry about it. Or they could add some chive or just another herb that they might want to use. Basil would be a great substitute in there. Uh, but taking it out is just fine too. Okay. And then lastly, uh, we're going to serve it with a uh, garlic and lime aioli on the side for dipping the quail in. Sounds awesome. Let's get going. All right. So right now, I'm just adding a little salt and a little sugar to the coleslaw. And we're just gonna let this sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. And you're gonna notice that uh, the coleslaw is gonna lose a lot of moisture. Okay. And so before we season it with the, uh, the sour cream and mayonnaise mixture, we're gonna press the coleslaw with our hands, just squeeze it and try and get the most moisture out as possible. This will increase um, how much flavor basically the coleslaw has when okay. it's a finished product. So I have salt and sugar in here. Uh, and we're just gonna let this sit for 20 minutes while we break down our quail. And it looked like you used about twice as much salt as sugar, is that accurate, or? Yeah, so I used about two pinches of salt and okay. one pinch of sugar. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna start breaking down these quail. Why don't you walk us through that? Yeah, so obviously quail is a pretty small bird, uh, and we're gonna break this into quarters. So we're gonna take the legs, and we're gonna take the breast out individually, okay. and we're gonna have four per bird, kind of like a, chicken wing size bite. Okay. Uh, so after they're broken down, we're gonna sear them in hot oil with our seasoning and then uh, just serve them alongside our coleslaw. Sounds good. Great, I'll get to it. So we're obviously, we're just removing the wings. They're not, there's not enough meat on there to make it worth doing anything with. Yeah, so I'm gonna remove them at the, at the middle joint. Okay. And then we're gonna take these bones and put them into a stock for a later recipe okay. with uh, quail meatballs. Nice. Yeah, so we're not wasting anything. Waste here. nothing, yep. So I'll do all those first. And you want me to just get those right in the stock back there? That sounds great. So then first on this guy, uh, we're just gonna take the legs off and they're pretty easy to take off. If you look here, uh, you'll see a joint that's back here. Okay. We wanna cut around the back of that joint and there's a tiny bit of really delicious meat here uh, right behind the joint. So I'm gonna cut uh, th through there, snap that joint out, as you can okay. see. Yep. And then cut there and through the joint and you have a delicious little snack. And we'll do the same with the other one. So that delicious little piece on the back, that's basically the tenderloin? Yeah, it, it's akin to that. We call it the oyster. Okay. Um, 
but it's it's just a tender little bite of great meat. So you want to make sure to get that if you can. Okay. And then I'm going to cut the breast out here. And for doing something like this, how important is a super sharp knife? It's it'll it'll make your life a whole lot easier. It's al always important to have your knife sharp in the kitchen. Uh, most accidents happen with a dull knife because you're forcing it too much. Um, and especially with a really delicate small bird like this, if you have a dull knife, it's just really easy to uh, make a lot of miscuts. And you'll end up over butchering the meat and you won't have a product that looks good and you'll waste a bunch too. So these, this is a, like a semi-flexible Victoria Knox uh, six inch boning blade and it works absolutely perfect. So once we get all these done, we're gonna take these carcasses and we're gonna put these into the stock for the, a dish later um, or to use in the, save in the fridge, yep. use it for anything you want. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. There's lots of little tiny cuts of meat in there that we can get more out of. Yeah, so no why point waste throwing anything. away. Exactly. Cool, I'll keep doing this okay. and let's get that stock rolling. Okay. All right, so our slaw has been sitting for about 30 minutes? 20, 30 minutes, yep. Okay. And it has a salt and sugar on it, so uh, it's starting to weep, moisture's coming out of the coleslaw. We're gonna take it, we're gonna pick it up and squeeze anything we can out of it. Okay. We're gonna put it back in our mixing bowl and then add our sour cream um, and mayonnaise mixture and then throw in our cilantro, um, our cut green onions and a little bit of uh, lime juice. Okay. And then we're gonna taste it for salt and add more if we need to. So, and we want to get this as dry as possible so that stuff will stick to it, right? Yeah, it'll help it. Uh, it'll help the mayonnaise stick to the, the cabbage, but it'll also just intensify the flavor by taking out some water and moisture from the product. So, you can see there's some purple juice coming out of there. And I'm going to take anything that was kind of sitting at the bottom of the bowl, dump it out as well. Okay. Yeah, that is very purple. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And now um, we're going to take some mayonnaise and sour cream. My hands have a little cabbage on them. Just take a scoop of this. We can add more later if we need to. Uh, we can feel it out. There's no really right, right or wrong. If you like it a little creamier, you can add more. If you like it a little less creamy, you can do that. Um, and then we have our green onions. Just throw those right in. And then you can see our cilantro. It's just really rough cut. Really rough, yeah. We really like the stems. Uh, it gives it a little texture, a little bite, and there's a whole lot of flavor in there too. And then we're gonna take a squeeze of lime. Add over there and find a pair of tongs. And just give it a good mix. This is a really easy, really quick recipe. Sure, you yeah. get everything prepped up. Uh, and then it takes about five minutes to fold it together and you're ready to go. It's got a great color to it, really, that the red cabbage, the cilantro, the green onions, they all pop really nicely against the white. Yep, it's a, it's a beautiful dish, easy to make, um, and it goes really good with uh, a spicy food because, again, there's cream in here and that kind of helps cut through the spice of the Nashville spice. Um, great dish all around. All right, you want to try it for salt? Sure. Finger food is welcomed here. This is that's the way to try things in the home kitchen. Need any salt? Any sugar? Maybe a little bit of salt, but I love the taste of cilantro in that. And you're right, the stems give it a little extra texture. I mean, the cabbage is already fairly crunchy, but you can definitely feel that stem. It's yeah. delicious, yep. absolutely great. Cool, well we're gonna let this sit and then we're gonna season our uh, quail, fry those up and then we'll have a, another meal ready to go. That sounds good to me. Awesome. All right, so that cabbage is now sitting, uh, it's all dressed, ready to go. So we're gonna fry up our quail. Uh, traditionally like a, a Nashville hot chicken or a Nashville hot quail uh, would be breaded, but we're gonna skip that. Right. I don't eat a lot of breading, I like to kind of simplify things. Uh, and I, I like to focus on the protein. So it's not a traditional Nashville hot, but it's gonna have that same kind of flavor because we're using uh, this, this seasoning, the okay. Nashville hot seasoning. So we're gonna season these in this mixing bowl. And then back here on the stove, we have a pot getting hot. 
We're gonna add a little oil to that and then dump all of our uh, legs and breasts in, skin side down. Try and get them a little crisp, uh, flip them once or twice, and then that'll, they'll be cooked and we'll be ready to eat. Sounds great, I cannot wait. So we're just gonna mix everything, season everything all at once. Yep. It all goes into the pot together. Keep it nice and easy. Okay. So no real rule on how much seasoning. This yep. does have salt in it already, so um, I'm just gonna dump a little bit in there. If you like it hotter, add more. If you don't like it hot, add less. Um, you could also use you know, any other poultry seasoning you want if you don't want anything spicy. Uh, we're just kind of thinking about this like maybe how you would cook a chicken wing. So okay. uh, any seasoning you want to do is just fine on there. And that Nashville hot from Excalibur definitely does have a kick to it. So if you are spice adverse, I'd recommend either light or go with something else. So I'm gonna add a little more because I like it spicy. So do I. And then I'm actually gonna also take these back out of this mixing bowl and put them back on the plates so that we can uh, easily see which side is skin side up, which okay. side is skin side down. It's a good tip. And uh, we're gonna put the legs on one plate because we're gonna start those sooner. We're gonna put those in first to cook them a little longer. And then we're gonna put the breasts in second so they cook a little cook a little less. So we want skin side down so that skin is getting really nice and crispy. Yeah, we're gonna tr we're not gonna be able to get it completely crispy, mm -hmm. uh, but we will be able to get a little crispness out of it. Okay. So uh, if you start it on the skin side down, uh, it, that'll just make that process happen a little more quickly. All right. All right, so we're over here. We've got the pan nice and hot. Gonna add some oil? Yeah, so we're gonna add uh, a grapeseed oil. So grapeseed oil has a little higher smoking temp, uh, so it won't turn rancid or it'll just keep its qual positive qualities to it. So we want a little bit of smoke here. A touch a touch of smoke okay. will tell you that uh, it's, it shouldn't be sticking to the pan. Okay. That nothing will stick to the pan. So we're actually gonna let that wait for a second. Sure. Kick it up a little bit. Yep. And you can see in the oil, you can see how easily it's moving around. Right. So that's a good uh, signifier that the oil is hot enough to make proteins not stick to the pan. Other thing you got to watch out for here, uh, one tip we use in restaurants is uh, when we lay something in a hot pan with oil, you know that this is going to have moisture content in it. Okay. Uh, so it's going to create some splatter just naturally. Um, so when we lay things down, we try and lay them away from us rather than towards us. Okay. So it splatters towards its wall and not towards you. That's a very good tip. So I can see it's uh, pretty hot now. So I'm going to turn the heat down a touch. Okay. And start adding the quail. And you can hear that sizzle. Oh yes. And you know if you hear that sizzle that it, it's not going to stick. Love that sound. And you can see they're immediately starting to contract. Yeah. Protein's uh, getting hot quickly and that'll that'll have that effect. And there's that one of the splatters we were talking sure. about. Oh, so we're just waiting a couple of seconds before we put the breasts in. So yeah. that's not a long difference at all. Not at all. And these, they don't have to cook. Uh, obviously, they're so small, they're not going to cook for very long. Right. So we want to keep the temperature up to try and crisp, crisp that skin as much as possible. Okay. And you're pretty much, looks like you're trying to keep them in the areas of the pan where there's a little bit more oil. Yeah, I was, I was trying that initially. You can see this pan's a little bit sure. warped. Uh, but my main thing I was trying to do is just keep them evenly spaced. Okay. Uh, if, you, if things get clumped up too much, they kind of spill their moisture into each other and they're harder to get brown colors on. Okay. So this pan also now you can see um, it's starting to fill up with a little too much oil uh -huh. and that'll hinder the browning process. So I'm going to take this uh, and just dump it on, dump some of the oil onto a plate so that we're not trying to deep fry these, we're just trying to basically pan sear them. Yeah, just a, a sh we call it a shallow fry. Shallow fry. Uh, so we're just trying to get some crispiness um, and just really like sear that natural hot seasoning into the quail. And you can see there's still oil in the pan, they're just not kind of swimming in that oil. Sure. So I turned the heat back up a little bit after I dumped the oil because I could hear some of the sizzle went away, but you Stop. can see um, when I shake the pan that nothing's sticking and working it just how it's supposed to work. And I flip one over but you can see how it's starting to just barely brown. Yep. 
I'm gonna flip it back over. A little bit longer? Yep, a little bit longer. And just kind of let them sit. Yeah, those are browning up really nice. All right. So when you're shaking the pan, you're trying to keep things from sticking by keeping it moving? Well, my initial shaking of the pan uh, was just to make sure that things weren't sticking. Okay, so you're now, checking. Just checking. And now I kind of just want to let them sit so that uh, the same parts of the skin stay on the pan. Okay. Um, so that we, so it browns nicely. Like this breast is oh, yeah. brown perfectly. So I'm going to flip, actually I'm going to flip everything right now because it all seems to be doing pretty good. I'm gonna let it finish cooking on the other side. There's a breast that's halfway done. Yeah, so without using a ton of oil here, you've managed to give it a nice crispiness to it. I mean, when I think Nashville hot, I do tend to think deep fried, yep. but these look absolutely delicious. This back row here, those are gonna be the ones I target. Yeah, for sure. nice and brown back oh, yeah. here. Um, and oh, up here too. And again, this is just a good technique where you don't have to use, you know, putting a lot of flour and you do your egg wash and all that. It can get really messy in the kitchen. Sure. You have to you have to get a huge pot of oil going. That can be tricky too. You can get a similar flavor profile um, with a lot less work, and I think equally good result by going this this route. And let's just be honest, deep fried stuff is not that healthy for you. Not, as good as it is, <laughs> not at all. You gotta, you gotta limit that every now and then. Yep. So these guys all look like they're pretty much done. Um, I'm feeling them, feeling them there. They don't take much time, obviously. Such a little bird. I'm gonna take the breasts out first because those will cook the quickest. Okay. I need the least amount of time. And they're gonna continue to cook for at least a few degrees after you take them off. Yep, they'll always raise in temperature a few degrees, uh, even after out of the pot. So that's a good thing to remember. Now, the legs take any longer because it's a more strongly built muscle, or does the bone have something to do with that? Yeah, it's mainly because there's some, there's just more connective tissue in there in, yeah. in uh, any poultry leg for the most part. Um, and so, if you if you just cook them a little further past, you know, these are these are our gold temperature is about 155 to 165. Okay. Gold temperature on a leg is more like 170, 175, and you can see one of the signs of knowing that the meat is starting to fall off the bone as it starts to pull away. Okay. Um, at the bottom, you can see it here and there. And that's what we're looking for. Yep. Okay. And so now that I see that in one, uh, they're all pretty much good to go. Okay. So almost a similar thing to a, a pork butt for pulled pork. We're cooking higher to break down that connective tissue. That's exactly right. Okay. And it's such a small animal, it's just a really, it's a much shorter window. Here we go. This is our, these are our quail bites and we can go plate them with uh, the rest of the stuff. Let's get it. All right, now we have all of our components ready. We have our coleslaw that's uh, dressed and it has cilantro green onions in it. Um, I added a little more lime juice because it needed a little more. Okay. Always taste you know, everything as you're making it. So I added another squeeze of lime and then we have our awesome quail uh, legs and breasts right here. And then we also made a, uh, a dipping sauce for those. It's, a, it's like a garlic and lime aioli. Oh but kind of resonate on the lime flavors in here. Goes great with um, a hotter, you know, hotter fried food. So uh, for plating, we're just gonna take some coleslaw, put it right in the middle here. Yeah, and that's just gorgeous. Everything pops so nicely. The almost purpley red of that cabbage. You got the green, some lingering white from your mayo. You can tell you do this for a living, huh? Yeah, I've done this a few times here. And then we're gonna put this dipping sauce right there. There's all those breasts. And then, you know, if anyone wants a little more lime juice, okay. put that on the plate for them. And that's your, that's your dish. You wanna give it a shot? Let's give it a shot. So, uh, real quick, Walk us through how you made this. Just so, this is just the basic uh, mayonnaise. We actually use an avocado-based mayonnaise. Okay. Uh, it just, I think it has a really clean flavor to it. And then we just squeezed uh, fresh lime juice into a small pile of diced garlic. Um, and the, the lime juice kind of takes a little bit of the bite of the garlic away. Okay. And then we just fold those into our mayonnaise. It's really simple, really easy, uh, and it's delicious. Excellent. Here we go.
Good? Oh, yes. <laughs> that is delicious. I want to try one without. I got to get in and one of the mayonnaise. Oh, yeah. That is absolutely excellent. You can, that Nashville hot seasoning comes through. Mm. That is so good, Chef. The legs are my favorite part. So I got to get into one of these. I think I could have even used a little more <clears throat> natural hat. As I'm saying that, it's starting to hit the back of my throat. It got you. Yeah. All right, so I good. guess I have to try one of the legs too. Let's try dipping it in. There is a big difference in the level of heat without this dip and with it. So you're right. Yep. It cuts it very, very much so. Man, I could eat these all day. Jeez. So next time you're having some people over, don't bring out boring old buffalo wings, chicken wings, whatever. Take a few extra minutes. I mean, this did not take long. We were done in under 30 minutes. Yep. And this is something that you bring this out to a bunch of guys drinking beers on your back porch, this is gonna cause a stir. These are absolutely delicious. There'll be nothing left by the end of the night. There'll be nothing left in two minutes. <laughs>